Hi, I'm Harry, and I'm a Queen's Young Leader. This film is about a charity that has changed tens of millions of lives, including mine. The Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust was set up to honor Her Majesty the Queen and leave a lasting legacy in her name. Working with a group of inspiring partners, the Trust is focused on tackling avoidable blindness. Most people actually go blind because they have not been reached and we can change that situation. And empowering the next generation of change makers through the Queen's Young Leaders Program. Anything that we want to see differently on the planet, it is up to us. We are definitely the leaders of now. Meet Katido. He lives in a remote part of Uganda where the Trust has been working to treat and prevent trachoma the world's leading infectious cause of blindness. Abu ayam atau ni dek jolu, tuh potongnya kepi mak. Tuh yang ayam, tuh tu yang ayam lagi. Tuh juga kena tuju. Abu ayam atau ni ada mai. Ibu kini rakam abala ayam. The impact of the trust work to eliminate trauma has been huge. The trust has worked in 12 countries, of which three are on the verge of being verified trauma free. Over 22 million people have been treated to prevent them going blind. People like Katido now have the tools to ensure this disease never returns. Diabetes is the world's fastest growing cause of preventable blindness. In Bangladesh, where one in 10 adults have diabetes, a young woman called Bisfeka is determined to change this. With the support of the Trust, she's reaching remote communities that previously have never been educated on the dangers of diabetes. Yes, the program is that the local diabetes and diabetic diabetes are diabetic diabetes diabetes the এসব লোকের সামর্থ্য নাই যে তারা এটার চিকিৎসা করতে পারবে তাদের বলি তখন তারা খুব মানে মনোজ মনোযোগ সহকারে শুনে কারণ তারা তখন আমারে বলো যে আপা এই বিষয়টা তো আমি আগে জানতাম না এখন জানছি The trust site saving work for those with diabetes has taken place in 13 Commonwealth countries. Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust এই সহায়তা যে আমরা না পেতাম ডায়াবেটিস এর কারণে অন্ততর হার বেড়ে যেত It's especially tragic when premature babies go needlessly blind because of retinopathy of prematurity, an avoidable condition that is a leading cause of childhood blindness worldwide. Eye doctor Sabhadra Jalali has made it her life's work to tackle it in the Indian city of Hyderabad. Slowly I started seeing that few babies were coming to my clinic who were blind. When we could have done laser, we would have been able to save that good sight the child was born with. India has the largest number of premature births, ROP, which happens only in the incubator, affects only the premature babies. Very rapidly, newborn centers started mushrooming all over the place. All of us retina surgeons in the country were suddenly overwhelmed. So we realized that we need to scale up to a national level. And it is there that we were greatly helped by the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust. Since the Trust began working in India in 2013, services to screen and treat the eyes of premature babies have been set up in 21 hospitals in four districts, serving a population of 47 million people. The government, with the help of the Trust, set up a national task force. We have come up with the national guidelines, which has been published and implemented across the countries. 
For so many people, good eye care is scarce. 90% of avoidable blindness is found in developing countries. The Trust set out to strengthen healthcare systems and invest in people and technology with the potential to bring quality eye care to everyone in the Commonwealth. When I started my application process for the master's course here at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, that's when I heard about the Trust. They were offering this scholarship. It was almost like a dream come true. I now know why I exist. It may sound a little spiritual, but uh, I, I have found the meaning of my life. We've trained more than 25 doctors to do screening for our OPs. Now the babies from even smaller towns are slowly getting access to our OP care, which has been a very, very positive change, I would say. Tackling the sheer scale of eye problems across the Commonwealth requires innovative solutions, and few have been more innovative than Dr. Hilary Ronner. I'm excited today because we are heading to this village to test this new technology that I've been working on. And should the technology prove successful, this will be the beginning of a revolution in eye care. Speak enables the smartphone be used as a diagnostic tool. Somebody with little training can actually use this technology to take the pictures and send it to the doctors and at wherever they are. Using PIC, we have just identified 10 people that can be treated. And tomorrow, we are going to operate five of them. I've been involved in PIC right from the beginning. And I decided to take this further by doing a PhD. The organization that was supporting PIC the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust was willing to support and fund my education. When I saw the email, I said, wow. It was one of the most exciting moments in my life. We've done cataract surgery. I'm very happy. I'm also proud of my team. Great, bingo. Peak's founder, Dr. Andrew Bistaris, believes that we can be optimistic about the future. The Trust have always had a, a view that their work is time limited, but their legacy won't be. What they've done with Peak has enabled us to take a vision and turn it into a reality. All of that has been possible because the Trust backed us, and I'm incredibly optimistic that what we were talking about a decade ago will not be true in two decades. Dr. Bastaros is right to be optimistic. Katido, Ms. Fekka, Dr. Jalali, Dr. Rono are just a handful of remarkable people the Trust has been working with over the last five years. Breaking down barriers across the Commonwealth, dismantling health inequality, and ensuring a future free of darkness for the tens of millions of people at risk of going blind. That's a powerful legacy the Trust leaves in honor of the Queen as head of the Commonwealth. And as a Queen's young leader, I'm also proud to be part of that legacy. In 2005, my family arrived in Britain as refugees fleeing from Zimbabwe. We face an uncertain future, and yet, here I am. Honored to be representing a new generation of changemakers, a Queen's young leader chosen for the work I've done to challenge gender-based violence. I'm one of the 240 incredible young people brought together to connect, collaborate, and change lives. A new generation recognized by the Queen as changemakers, inspired to step up to make a lasting difference across the Commonwealth. From mental health, climate change, access to education, employment, gender equality, these are just a few of the pressing issues facing the world today that the Queen's young leaders are dedicating their lives to resolve. What has always struck me about these young people is their humble but passionate determination to make life better for their communities. Winning the award was quite amazing, but more importantly, it was the message behind the award that you were being recognized for leading change in your country. I definitely see the legacy of the Queen's Young Leaders program following us, I think, throughout all of our lives. Grants have also been given to 22 youth-led and youth-focused organizations working to help solve the problems affecting young people and communities in which they live. The trust may be closing, but the work goes on in the lives of the 240 Queen's young leaders like me, and the legacy of millions of families who will not be burdened by the loss of sight. From my heart then, on behalf of me and all those the trust has empowered and cared for, thank you. <laughs>